When you're losing trades, you might think it's because it was just a bad trade. But the truth is, right when you open up the charts, that can determine if you're going to be a winner or a loser. Let me just explain. So 90% of traders, they just open up the charts, thinking they can go straight to business and start trading. But that is a bad habit, which a lot of people have. So to fix this, I've made a simple and easy trading routine, which all of you guys can easily start using. First of all, wouldn't it make sense when you're opening up the charts to write down what you think is going to happen today? Well, there's actually a bunch of studies talking about how writing things down can make your brain remember and process information more effectively. And that is crucial when we are trading. If you want to do this, I recommend either writing it down on paper, which is actually proven to be better than writing it on computer. But if you want to do it on your laptop or PC, I recommend the platform Notion or Word, as these two platforms are very easy to make a journal with. An example looks something like this. So let's say that I thought price is bullish, then I'm going to write down why. As we can see right here, price have closed above previous day's high over and over and over again, meaning the bias is bullish, then I'm going to write down bias, bullish. And then I'm also going to write down the reason, price closed above previous day's high, which means the previous day's high for the next day is to draw on liquidity, and that also means the bias for the next day is bullish. So in your journal, it's going to look a bit different because when you're writing it down on Notion or Word, you of course have to take a screenshot because when you're going back in your journal, you can see what was going on in that moment. Now that we have gone over our first step, we can move over to the next step, which can easily transform your trading. So we know the reason why to write our thoughts down and where, but how do we know what to look at in the charts? Well, we're going to use the approach which is called top-down analysis because it will show us the true bias of price action. But what is a top-down analysis? First, we start on the daily time frame where we are going to look at the bias and of course write it down in our journal. For example, let's say the bias is bullish because we are delivering from a fair volley gap. Then we're going to write down the reason and what the bias is. Next, we move down to the 4-hour time frame, where we're also going to look at the bias. If we're bullish on the 4-hour time frame as well, we're going to write down the reason and the bias. Lastly, we move down to the 1-hour time frame, where we again look at the price to see if we're bullish. And if we are, we write down the reason and the bias. But here comes the tricky part, because if one pair is not aligning with the rest, that can ruin our bias, as we want to see all the time frames aligning with each other for the best possible bias. But it doesn't mean we can't trade just because of that. We just have to keep it in mind that our bias might not be perfect and we traders have to be flexible. Now we have reached the third step and this trading routine we've been building is nothing without this next step. So when we have written down our bias for the day and why, we need to know how to take a trade entry. And you guys may be thinking it is easy, you just find your setup and press buy. But no, this is where most people fail. You should rather wait for the market to reveal itself. And what I mean is looking if price action is good or not, which we can find out by following some key metrics, starting with this first one. So the market has bad and good conditions. And one of the ways we can identify good conditions is by looking at fair volley gaps. Because when the market is showing a lot of fair volley gaps, then price action tends to be good. As you can see right here, from 8.30 all the way until 9.30, we can see there's not a lot of Favali gaps, it's really just chubby price action. Then 9.30 hits, and suddenly there's a lot of Favali gaps, and these Favali gaps results in price expanding, as we can see, and we get way better price action than from 8.30 till 9.30. And then from 9.30 all the way till 10.18, we can see we get expansion because there's a lot of Favali gaps, 1018 hits, we can see not a lot of favorability gaps, consolidations, and then again, favorability gaps, price starts to expand again. But of course, this isn't the only way we can see if price action is good or not, as it wouldn't be that reliable. So that's where the second step comes into play. And we start off by looking at the previous session behind the AM session, which is the London session. And if the London session has expanded, we usually see in the New York AM session that price action is not really good because price isn't expanding. And not many trade opportunities are offered, which equals bad price action. An example will look something like this. So we can see that the London session didn't really expand that much. It consolidated in the first half, and then in the second half, we got a little bit of movement, but it wasn't really that much. 
and that resulted in the AM session expanding a lot. As we can see, it went all the way down here, sweeping sell side liquidity all the way over here. And then from there, it started to move higher again. But once the London session does expand, we can then see that the New York AM session's price action is not that good. For example, right here, price in the London session, it expanded higher and that resulted in bad price action going into the New York AM session, as we can see. And the same over here, we can see that the London session did expand a bit and that resulted in the New York AM session's price action being very bad. The last metric we can find it on forexfactory.com, but instead of going there, I will just explain it in a short way. Now, when we have high impact news drivers, which is basically red folder news occurring at 8.30, the market often offers good price action, meaning the days which doesn't have high impact news drivers often offers bad price action. But this isn't the case every time, because from personal experience, I've seen some days which doesn't have high impact news drivers offer good price action. But a good rule of thumb is looking at trading days where we have high impact news drivers as days that can potentially offer good price action and stay open minded on non high impact news days. Now we have reached the last step in our trading routine, and this can really become a game changer if used correctly. Now, a trading routine wouldn't be complete if we haven't talked about taking the trade, as there's a few ways which you can do this, but I'm just going to go with the best way. So when you're looking at the time frame which you want to take a trade entry on, you first have to be mentally prepared to take a trade entry, meaning you should not be emotionally attached to a trade, as this is definitely easier than done. But something that have helped me with my trading is focusing on losing, and I don't mean literally start losing on purpose, but prepare yourself losing the next trade, because if you keep your expectations low, you won't be disappointed when you lose a trade because everybody loses trades once in a while. It's just about how you handle your losses. And the last thing is following your rules, meaning don't take any trade that doesn't completely align with your trading strategy. Because if you lose that kind of trade, you're going to be very frustrated. Also, be patient. You don't have to take every trade. There is always another one. Rather, take a high quality trade than one which barely follows your trading strategy. For example, let's say that I were to take a IVG trade entry and I wanted a delivery, a drawn liquidity, and a good risk reward ratio. Then let's say that I find this IVG right here, price closes above it, and I think about taking the trade because we have a solid IVG, but we don't really have a good risk reward ratio, the drawn liquidity is decent, and we don't really have any Favaldi gap delivery. So should I take this trade? Well, no, because as we can see, this resulted in a loss. But if it would have been a win, then it would still not have been good, because then you're used to taking these kind of trade entries which have follows your plan and have it does, and that we don't really want to. We want to take a trade entry that follows our exact trading strategy. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. But did you know that every trader should know at least five concepts? And if you want to save time not watching one hour guides on every concept, you can watch my video about it right here.